Hi guys, welcome back. Um, I thought today I would try using a magnetic mount mobile antenna as a base station antenna. I'm not going to use that one because that one's just a little too small. That's only a two footer. But I have this one, which is an antenna specialist from the 1970s. It's a base loaded quarter wave whip. Uh, it also has a magnetic base that goes with it. Um, I had to put new coax on this base, so while I had it open, I added a grounding wire to it. The antenna is going to get put on top of that pole. Uh, I cut that pole down to 102 and a quarter inches. That was for another project that I did. So it's already a resonant length, so it can also act as part of the ground plane. On the top of it, I put a piece of angle iron, and I drilled holes in it. I mean, I went overkill. This, it's what I had around. This is a really hefty piece of steel. Uh, but I drilled it, put the U-bolts, and gave some points for mounting my ground plane wires. The ground wire that I put on that base is going to slip through that hole in this angle iron, and it's going to come through, and I'm going to attach it to the pole. So the base of the antenna will be grounded to the pole. For the ground plane wires, I'm going to use that old extension cord. It's a 16 gauge extension cord. I'm going to chop that up and I can get six wires out of that uh, 602 inch long ground plane radials. I'm going to use some string to extend them to make them long enough to reach the ground. And I'm just going to tie the string around those long screws, those I think four and a half inch screws. And I'm going to use those as stakes just to stick them into the ground to hold the, the ground plane wires at the right angle. For the base of the antenna, again this is just temporary, so I've taken a piece of plywood, I attach some 2x4s to it, and the pole will just slip right down, right in the center of all those 2x4s. That'll hold it up good enough because, I'm again, I'm not leaving this up. If I was doing it more permanent, I'd make a better base for it but that'll do for the testing purposes. All right, so I'm gonna attach that base to the pole, get that all ready. I'll probably tape the coax to the pole just a little bit just so it doesn't yank on the base. And then I'm gonna cut up all my ground plane radials, get those wires cut down to the right length and attach them to the bolts. All right, so I got the base mounted to it with it grounded to the pole. You see that? And all my ground plane wires are all cut to length and separated and ready to be attached. So now I'm going to dig out some string to extend these wires some so that they I can put them at a 45 degree angle. Then we'll be ready to take this thing outside and try it out. So I'm just zip tying the string to the wire just to get an extra three feet and then just putting a knot in the end and putting it around a screw and the screw is going to be my stake into the ground you have to pull it pretty snug and set it at a 45 there it is it's all set up it only took about five minutes to actually set the antenna up but it took me twice as long because <laughs> All the strings got all tangled up. Just going from that walk-through door on the garage, the second one, to here. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some tape around these strings just so they don't get tangled up again when I move this. Because I may try this in a few different locations on the property just to see how it does. And the wires are about eight feet up in the air, maybe a little more. And I put a tape measure there to show you. We're at a 45 degree angle. Can you see that? We're a little over eight feet. Might not be perfect, but it's close enough. This should work pretty well. I don't know yet if that antenna is any good. For all I know, that uh, base on it might be full of corrosion. It is an old antenna. But we're going to give it a shot and see what it does. 
And why is don't need to be spaced perfectly? I mean, these are <laughs> far from perfect. I'm sure if I measure in between them, it's going to be different on every one, but it's close enough. Make a pretty good field day antenna too, wouldn't it? I have the coax strung up to the tree right now, just so that my cats don't try to play with it. Though this is awful tempting for them, this loop right here. All right, I gotta get a radio out here, get that set up, and we'll check and see if this thing actually works. <laughs> check this out, base station to go. <laughs> Got the battery on the hand truck. And I have a cheap little realistic mounted to, to the hand truck and a SWR meter. So that I can just cart this right outside to the antenna and check it out, see how it does. I currently have that little magnetic mount antenna connected to it, which that antenna actually turned out to be pretty good. It has a really good SWR even in here. So that one can tune pretty well. All right, so we're gonna cart this outside, just not right now, because it's about 100 degrees out there right now. I'll be bringing this out in the morning. It's too hot today. It's my little cheapy realistic. I call this radio my antenna tester because <laughs> I've had dead shorts and keyed up and keyed up and keyed up and it keeps keying up. So I just keep that one for testing antennas when I build antennas. Oh, well, we can see it. It's a TRC, what is it, a 415? Yep, 415. Rugged little rugged little radio all right we're gonna bring this out in the morning and we'll check that antenna all right so I had that antenna hooked up to it and that one evidently is no good uh, the match was sky high across the entire band so I took that one down and put the little two-footer up there and that one is actually giving me a fantastic match on this setup let me show you on channel 40 look at that Oh, you can't see that yet, can you? How about now? Look at that. Under 1.2 to 1. It gets even better on channel 1. Let me... Yeah. Channel 1. Let me just make sure that meter is calibrated. Look at that. Can you see that? Barely even 1.1 to 1. So, I think we ought to see if we can make any contacts with this thing. Alright, let's give this a try. Uh, my buddy Andre is on his radio on channel 35. So let's see if we can reach him with this little two foot antenna. He's about six miles away. How about it there, anti-gravity base station? You got a copy on the mower junkie? Uh-oh. Yeah, Roger, I can hear you. Oh, there he is. Awesome, this little, uh, it's a two-foot mobile antenna on top of some wires. It's making it all the way to you? Yep, three pounds. Awesome, fantastic. Glad to hear it. I guess this thing is working. All right, I thank you very much. I will let that anti-gravity base station float around for a while. You got Moa Junkie on this end. I'm going to say thank you very much and 73s. Roger, Roger. Yeah, sounds okay. Actually, it's four pounds. Nice. Copy that. All right, I got my testing done. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you in a minute. Awesome. Fantastic. Glad to hear it. I guess this thing is working. All right, I thank you very much. I will let that anti-gravity base station float around for a while. You got more junkie on this end? I'm going to say thank you very much and 73. So I thought that did pretty well. Uh, I already took the antenna back down. This thing is only a two foot tall antenna. It's a center load. Uh, there's not much to it. This is probably from the 80s. And I'm sure it wasn't a very expensive antenna in the 80s. I mean, it's not bad construction, but it's nothing great. And with a three watt radio, this puts out almost three and a half watts. Uh, I got to talk to the anti-gravity base station, which he's six miles away straight line. 
Uh, so I think it did all right. A little ten dollar radio, a ten dollar antenna, turned into a base station. But while I still got you here, the first antenna that I had hooked up. <laughs> I probably should have checked it before hooking it up because the coil is all jammed up which is why this one was giving a sky-high SWR the loading coil on the base of it's all damaged it looks like when somebody was trying to put the sleeve on they slammed right into that there's a, a soldered piece right there and it looks like they slammed this into that soldered piece to get it on all the way so that's why that one didn't work out and we had to swap out and use the little two footer. But the two footer worked out pretty well. It made the trip, it got the testing done that I wanted to have done and it all worked out pretty good on my three and a half watt radio. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I have more plans for mobile antennas in the future. There's a, another test I want to do with that little two footer. Stay tuned. You'll come next time. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.